Hello everyone, uh, today I was going to talk about Australia, um, and uh, this is a project I started a few years ago, um, and really, uh, you know, just the size of Australia and its proximity to the South Pole, Antarctica, uh, as well as the mystery of Australia uh, and New Zealand, um, it's kind of a different place altogether. Um, than I thought. So really, um, you know, there's quite a lot of the story left uh, to talk about Australia. Um, I thought that I'd kind of start with this image, Earth at Night, um, and showing some of the mysteriousness of Australia. It's just got so much land um, that is not, there's nobody out there. Um, and so I, I really wanted to kind of like look at that um, in particular, and see, you know, what what you see here is along the coast, uh, from Brisbane all the way down to Melbourne, and even the city here, uh, Perth, are kind of on the other side, um, and then a few kind of smaller cities all on the edge. But then there's like one city maybe in the center here, so a couple uh, scattered around. But the night image, I wanted to tilt it, uh, kind of showing you uh, the, the the change here. So you got Antarctica um, here. Uh, and then you have New Zealand out here, um, and then you have all of Southeast Asia that this points to uh, hitting into Papua New Guinea. Um, so uh, the size of the cities is actually quite large uh, in terms of skyscrapers uh, and other things. We're not really going to go into that, but I'm going to just go through all these maps really quick so I won't bore you. Um, on the discussion. So here's a flipped upside down image of Australia. I just thought it was more clear to define kind of the farmland. Um, and you can see New Zealand is pretty farmed uh, as a percentage. Um, and you can see kind of most of the coastline here, uh, as well as over in Perth, uh, being pretty heavily farmed. Now here is just a river map of Australia, um, as well as the aquifers. So you can see some very unusual things going on here. Uh, particularly in the center, there's just, uh, it's, and then also how this all works here. Give me one second. So it's just so complicated in terms of uh, difference uh, perspective of how the world works. You know, in the United States, uh, Mississippi River is really so centralized, but there's really some very extraordinary rivers in the north side of Australia. Uh, that happens primarily because of the weather, and you can see the weather map, there's just so much rain uh, that comes up here mysteriously and then vanishes quite fast because it's so hot on that side of Australia. So, uh, and here is another version of the river map, but also includes some of the soil maps. So you can see uh, some of the mystery of this river that just kind of drains into this uh, mysterious lake in the center of Australia. Uh, and so some of that weather that we were talking about, basically there's a huge amount of lightning. So it gets very dry um, as well as very wet. Um, at the same time, right along the coast, uh, and then suddenly dry in the center. So you can just see that here. Um, so basically, that's uh, this up area in Darwin. Um, so you'll see a lot of the major cities all around Australia here. Uh, and I wouldn't underestimate anything. So you can really have a lot of fun uh, outside of Sydney, um, Brisbane, uh, Melbourne here, Perth. Um, each city is very different. And in fact, Perth is completely on the opposite side of Australia. And then here's kind of another upside down map showing the geology. The rock is actually quite interesting. This pink rock um, is very important uh, rock type. You see it's kind of a harder rock um, and uh, it shows uh, different types of rock as well, as well as some sand and some other things. Um, and then the population you can see, uh, this shows us some very interesting keys. Uh, that you might not quite understand intuitively uh, if you don't know about Australia. So first of all, let's start down in Melbourne. So actually Sydney is what most people think of as the cool spot in Australia, but actually Melbourne uh, extends out quite a lot more um, than Sydney. And there's actually kind of a gateway between Sydney and Melbourne on the inland side. And then Brisbane, you can see up here also being very important city and then Perth on the opposite side and then Darwin up here. So, and there's just so many coastal towns and then kind of stopping at some point along there. And then you can see Tasmania here. And I'm gonna actually bring this over to New Zealand so you can see. So it's interesting when you study the economics of this region, uh, they usually include New Zealand with Australia. Um, so we're gonna look primarily 
at Australia in this discussion. And what I would say is that uh, one of the most important parts of doing a study like this is that you start to get acquainted with Australia and you can make friends there. And you can also think about how to work with people in Australia uh, better because you just understand uh, the country a little bit better. So uh, this map shows you the mountain ranges. So it's very mysterious because uh, you know it, it's kind of strange that the mountains kind of collect down here uh, towards Melbourne and then even towards Tasmania and then various search mountains once you get out to uh, New Zealand here, um, as you can see. So uh, it is a very mysterious point here. Um, and you can see how uh, some of that weather may interact with the environment. Um, and then on the deforestation tide, I heard that Australia used to be almost completely forested, um, which is very mysterious. And then now um, actually is, you know, like on this map, you can see not too much forest left on that uh, map. So uh, at least it was like 70% forest. So uh Anyway, so the infrastructure map is also interesting. You can kind of get some new keys about how it works, uh, particularly once you get outside of Melbourne and Sydney. And it looks like Sydney kind of controls that infrastructure because uh, it's kind of the middle point uh, for Australia. But then this city out here really kind of changes the inland version. And then there's some mysterious power lines out here as well as out in Darwin and then over here as well. And then you can see up towards Brisbane. Um, and then the airport diagram is really interesting because actually there's so many airports in Australia. I think part of that is because of the industry. Um, but when you think about it, really it's just Perth, Melbourne, uh, excuse me, a couple other cities here and Brisbane. So these are the major international airports, um, but there's actually a whole lot of other smaller airports around um, Australia so uh, and then you can kind of see here on this map um, the details of the population and I wanted to kind of zoom in so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back at each one of these and kind of zoom in everything a little bit later in the discussion uh, and then the economics is interesting um, it's actually kind of hard to get the picture of what's going on but it's really surprising how much the mining industry is in uh, as well as just the raw earth material aspects of earth um, in Australia. So that really should uh, kind of change your perspective about earth, like when you're thinking about um, what uh, actually goes on on the planet and how mining industry really is super important. So on this, I was really surprised. I changed this to a two uh, here, and you can see vehicles are seriously important. So one thing I detected is that if you're in the automobile industry, uh, man, they import almost everything. It might be really interesting to get involved in some startups uh, for cars in Australia because they're basically importing, I mean, 50% of their entire uh, imports are almost with automobiles um, and other things. So kind of an interesting opportunity there. Um, this map is just so cool because it shows you how the shipping works in Australia um, and you can see uh, just the coastal and how Melbourne kind of fits in Perth and then some very interesting cities along the side here uh, and then the kind of the soil map showing uh, some of the diversity of soil so the nice part about this map is you can kind of see uh, where the heavy desert is versus the maybe mediums not so serious of a desert um, and then the dirt kind of quality changes. So that's probably where you get the forest as on the pink side. And I've actually seen uh, it pretty heavily forested um, around the world in some of those regions. Um, and then certainly in these brown areas, we should see um, more. And they're actually doing quite a good job of farming in Australia uh, relative to uh, some places. Um, but here is more of that geology. You can see how Perth actually is really important, right? So there actually is quite and the mining industry does kind of come out of here and there was some of these areas where there's these pink spots like we mentioned before uh that's where some of those biggest companies in the world actually operate um so some of those maps are super important i'm going to pause this here um and let people kind of catch up to the discussion there's so many people around um that may be interested in what's going on so hope this will help thanks 
So I really want to look at this mining diagram just because, um, you know, industry and thinking about uh, the future is really important. Um, there's a lot of spiritual aspects uh, to understanding the earth um, and kind of looking at the geology really is a good place to start. Um, and I'm really interested in the geology of Antarctica, actually. Um, and it's hard to say uh, what the true geology is because there's so much ice on top of Antarctica. Um, but with the close proximity to Antarctica, it makes it very important to kind of understand um, essentially what's going on here. So uh, on the Perth side, this really surprised me. So basically, uh, you know, this the simplicity of, you know, it's kind of very separated here, right? Tasmania. Um, and then you get almost uh, plain geology, right, when you get into Sydney. But uh, it kind of changes here and then up towards Brisbane. So, But on this side, a huge plate of this pink um, rock. Um, and then you can kind of see all this stuff coming in through here uh, as well as a kind of a mysterious point here. Um, and then on this side here. So uh, one thing I would say is that the harbor in Melbourne is... Uh, quite different than the Sydney Harbor um, and you can see there's almost another harbor here um, and then up on this side there's kind of a weird geological formation almost on a u-shape um, and then this kind of explains some of this point so you can see it's actually right here uh, where that rock kind of changes along the side here um, and then out towards um, Sydney so you kind of have these sections here uh, and then Melbourne almost being a part of Tasmania so that's a new thing for me um, kind of connecting uh, essentially Melbourne uh, with Tasmania so you can kind of see that there might be a spiritual connection uh, somehow with the rock and that's one thing that you really need to think about as you're studying uh, places around the world um, is how things may be uh, spiritually connected so there's not really a direct connection here um, but you can see um, that the rock formations may be, and it doesn't show really underground here, so we'd need to see what the ocean floor looks like um, and some other details. And you can kind of see some of this purple stuff coming in here. Um, I'm gonna be circle that in green, so you can see there's these weird formations here, and then quite a vast piece right in here. So this kind of connects Darwin, Australia, all the way through here, and there's even kind of a little link uh, between this region here, um, and then certainly, um, here to here um, and there was uh, and you can kind of see these are the, the black is the plates so this is where the surface of the earth would actually move um, so uh, that's quite a big discussion so um, and I kind of separated here Melbourne um, which is interesting uh, and you can kind of see Brisbane made me separated and there's actually quite a different perspective of how Sydney may be um, in terms of the geology so if you just Think about the dirt and the rock alone, um, like in California, for instance, or where I'm in Idaho, um, you know, like different parts of the town, um, like if you live up on the hill or you live down in the valley or you live near a river or you live right on the ocean front, um, all that uh, kind of changes the feeling for what where you live and certainly the geology would also affect that. Let's look at the dirt really quick um, just to see. So. Um, that shows kind of a different picture, right? So you can see up here, uh, there's kind of a spot of dirt like that. Um, and then the Great Barrier Reef, actually, you can see that kind of come out here. Um, and it's really funny because the Great Barrier Reef is actually should be included out into here. Um, this is really considered the Great Barrier Reef. Um, but there's this whole area here, and then there's all the islands in the north. Um, and you can definitely see there's kind of a dirt area here. So as well as over here. Um, I'm kind of doing this. I'm familiar with this orange dirt. It's kind of like down in Florida, so it's pretty dark dirt, um, and it's pretty good soil overall, and there's a little spot right in here. Now, the interesting thing is on Perth, uh, you actually have an uh, interesting shape here. So uh, now this is probably no all sandy in this region, <laughs> so you can't farm in that at all. So it would give you kind of a feel, so if you live uh, in this these two pink regions, you're gonna feel pretty similar just because the dirt is similar there um, And look at the shape here out of Melbourne, right? So Melbourne you can kind of see the pressure towards Actually the west side of Melbourne and then heading all the way out here and even Kind of coming through here like that, right? So 
And if you did live down there, um, there is, and then there's kind of like these pockets of purple, right? I want to put that in green here so you can see there's a pocket there and kind of a pocket there. So whether you live on this side or this side, um, it might be a similar attitude of living and that might be um, <laughs> something to think about. So it actually shows that the Sydney side is actually pretty boring, right? Along the coast relative to what you see as you get into this region here. So, and especially out in Perth, along the coast here, you see a lot of colors of the dirt. And then coming up here in Brisbane, there's kind of um, quite a variety as well. You get into this purple stuff and some other things, but this coastal might surprise you in terms of the uniformity, but um, it does have quite a lot of, it kind of looks like San Francisco a little bit um in uh sydney but melbourne is actually a little bit flatter but anyway i'll save this image and then s upload that later um so let's look at the next one is probably the population map so it's probably wise to just go in detail and see what's going on on the world population map so we're gonna start in melbourne i'm gonna just zoom in here and you're gonna see essentially the footprint for the entire city. Um, and so what we see here is some pretty interesting stuff, right? So you kind of got a weird path here. Um, it's almost like when you're driving out to uh, Sydney, some people head out to the coastline and there's almost a separate city area out here. So all this is probably attributed to farm towns uh, just outside of Melbourne and then this you can see this actually starting to see some of that geology formation Some of this stuff out here. Uh, there is some mining towns and some other things But let's look at I just wanted to check out this city here because there's some stuff going on in this bay uh, That's a little bit different than what I wasn't really even aware of this so uh, This team this this little city here um, you have this gigantic bay um, and kind of only this area uh, being populated. So this might be a really fun smaller city and then there's a couple other pockets down here. So as you can see, um, there is some ferries and things. Um, there is a ferry that goes uh, from Sydney to Tasmania, but there's probably some other ferries around here. We should look on the map really quick for that. Um, let's just see if we can get that map. Um, where is it? Hmm. Thought I had, oh, here we go. So on the marine traffic map, you can kind of see that this is actually going to Perth, probably. And you can see a lot of the boats coming out of here, and then Melbourne, and then the coast actually being pretty heavy. So the actual boat traffic, you have to look at the boats here too, so you kind of get some feel for that. Uh, but let's go back to the population map, and then now let's look at, at the amazing city of Sydney, and then we'll head over to Brisbane. So. Interestingly enough, um, there's kind of more of a population on the north side here than the south side, and you can kind of see some interesting stuff coming out as it fans out. Um, but let's zoom in a little bit more detailed so you can see that just in case you don't have access to this on the internet. I'm trying to help some friends. Um, and there's actually a lot of people that may want to move here from the Middle East, actually, um, as well as Africa. Um, there's, uh, you know, there is a lot of foreigners um, in Australia, um, but I would definitely recommend uh, if you are in the Middle East to consider uh, Australia. I got <clears throat> a friend of mine uh, recently from Bangladesh that has some uh relatives but as you look along the coast here you can see some other cities let's head up to brisbane just to get a careful look at that so the weird thing about brisbane is it is very kind of stretched along the coast i didn't really like that too much um it makes it hard um because there's the downtown is a little bit and um, it's just there's so many basically the gold coast down here and then sunshine city so um it would be nice if they had more waterfront too uh sydney's got a little bit more of that waterfront but they're kind of moving the downtowns over here and then part of that is probably because of farming and clean water so at one time in history you basically needed clean water from the hills and they would have to move that up into the hills so basically the city um kind of moves based on that so heading over to perth now i would say one really surprising thing about perth uh, is they have penguins over there. So I was really thinking about 
checking it out. Um, so on Antarctica, they obviously have penguins, but there are uh, kind of a different species. They actually have them in Africa. And then there are a lot of penguins out in Perth as well. Um, so just kind of showing you uh, kind of the temperature too, because uh, penguins do like it a little bit colder. Um, so it is kind of interesting that they would pick Perth. Um, but I was really looking, when I first looked at Perth, I was really looking for like the farming and some other stuff. You can't really see that on this map. Um, I'll let you go take a look at all the rest of the stuff going on in terms of population. Um, but uh, you may want to just uh, grab one of these FAO maps and take a look at that. Um, let's, let's dive into this river map and then I think we're gonna keep it at that for the day. Um, all the other maps you can kind of go through um, and take a look at yourself uh, if you'd like. So uh, that map is this one, I believe. Let me find it here. Aha, uh -huh, this guy. So uh, really what is amazing here is how this city that we looked at is very important. So in terms of the rivers, I mean, this is the big guy in Australia as well as up in here, right? So it really it really explains, I mean, Sydney is a wonderful city, but look at how small all these rivers are. I mean, it's almost not even worth circling, right? So I'm gonna just keep it at that. So basically it really shows that Melbourne really isn't what you think at all. You'd think that Melbourne would actually be that river system here. Um, so there is quite a lot of pressure. And what happens there is that the towns and the farming and all that drains right into here um, and then you have the city just north so this would be a very big point to think about if you are thinking about moving to australia or working in australia essentially why that all is there um, as well as perth right so perth definitely is a river city um, and it's probably bigger than anything uh, up here i would say so something to think about uh definitely uh when you redefine how Australia is. So uh, again, I would take a look at all these. Um, this map here you can get from the economic of economics of Australia if you're thinking of trying to do some work down there. Um, definitely look at that Earth at Night. We started with that map um, and maybe I should end it with this map here too, but take a look at that because it gives you a fresh perspective. There's basically, it's one of the least inhabited continents uh, almost on the planet right so but you can see the farming footprint uh really heavy farming over in perth and that's something really interesting as i look at opportunities around the world and also close to africa on the other side so something to think about um and in the middle east so perth actually is a very interesting place because uh you know it's just closer to africa and closer to the middle east and really closer to asia right so um but uh, you basically have this side of Australia being the more complicated side in terms of farming. Um, and that's also something to think about as well. So again, this is just the river map and just the aquifer map. You may want to take a look at that. We already took a look at this. And then definitely understanding how different the climate can be. So Darwin can be a really exciting place uh, to live just because the lightning is so unusual up there. And I definitely say um, that's important to think about. There's also, that you can see the water is almost blue up there. So it's different color of water. Um, and then this this is another geology map that we didn't look at and you can see, wow, does this change? Uh, it kind of makes it all look like this is a big chunk here. Uh, and then Perth being heavy because it's all pink rock here. Uh, but the complexity in there, um, this kind of brings a different picture. And I really love it because it brings uh, the, it actually brings the complexity of the geology over to the coastline here. Uh, but although we typically mine this other pink rock, um, there's definitely some complexities here that makes it really fun to live on and actually kind of centering around Brisbane. And I've actually thought about not even traveling to city because it's too expensive and just going directly to Brisbane. And this is one of the reasons the complexity of the culture and all that can kind of uh, converge on a different place um, so it can really help you understand <coughs> differences um, if you're interested in complex that. But the solidness of the rock here um, and just the mining that you got in Africa. So there's basically so much mining. I mean, all the biggest diamonds, all the awesome rocks that have come from Africa. Um, they just discovered one of the world's largest diamonds there recently. 
something definitely to think about. And then we didn't really diagram this one out. I probably should have diagrammed it um, out in more detail, um, the population, but look at what's going on here. So basically, it's almost like a separate world, right? You basically have this whole Sydney, Brisbane side, and then Melbourne, <laughs> Melbourne. So it's almost like there's this uh, several different cultures kind of heading out here. And then even I probably should do this as a whole separate region. So this kind of gives you some idea. There's all this deep inland mining, like you just basically almost fly in or I, I don't know how these mines work, but then there's a separate coastline all along here with populations. So this should kind of give you some, some keys to <coughs> culturally what's going on. And I'm really interested in Tasmania. So actually I might check out Brisbane, Melbourne and skip uh, <coughs> Sydney entirely. Um, down in here, right? So something definitely to think about. Give me a second. I'm gonna get a drink of water. So yeah, and the other thing I was just thinking as I was getting a glass of water is that a lot of people think of the Far East as China or even Japan, but you're really getting even farther east when you get out to Australia and New Zealand. So definitely it'd be wise to look at the population of New Zealand and that's another really interesting area, but this should definitely give you some clues uh, to how Australia works um, and uh, just seeing some of the amazing. So I would say this right here is probably the in most interesting area for mining, right? This town, um, although Perth is <clears throat> very rock solid, um, but you kind of get some interesting, well, I'm sorry, farming as well. Um, so here you can kind of see some of those rock formations. So kind of that solid rock in through here. Um, and some other areas and then the deforestation and some so on. So I hope you really enjoyed the study. Um, there's just so many fun things to study about the planet. Um, and I hope you really enjoyed uh, taking a look at Australia um, from a new perspective. Um, I'll publish this up on the internet and let me know if you got any questions. I honestly can't really afford to go to Australia right now. Um, I also have some other problems going on. Um, but I'm very interested. So if you want to team up, work on how to make it cheaper to travel there, um, sharing hotels, uh, working on some things, find some people, uh, whether it's me or other people, um, and then kind of work on a plan that would be really fun. So there's so much to learn here um, about the biodiversity. It's totally different. I mean, they got kangaroos down here. So I hope you really enjoyed the study. Thank you so much. I'll see you later. Ciao. Thank you so much.